Welcome back to the fourth lesson of Learn Zapier in 14 Days. We know incident management is crunch time for IT departments. So Zapier created a handy template to satisfy all your communication needs. This incident management template helps streamline all your response communication by kicking off the process and alerting your teams to take action. This is how we'll break down our automation. As soon as an incident is detected, an incident response team member fills out a simple form in Zapier interfaces to record details. Once the form is filled out, a workflow is triggered that creates a dedicated Slack channel for the incident and tags the team or group who needs to respond. Then, the incident data is stored in a Zapier table and displayed below the form. This creates a single source of truth for all incident reports. So, let's get started! We'll start in the Zapier dashboard and navigate towards the bottom of the page to access the templates library. On the template page, an overview of the template's functionality is displayed. Click the Try It button to start the setup process. Now that our template has been created, we can see that the template has already done most of the work for us. Our interface form and tables have been built and assembled so that we could focus on customizing our Zap. But first, let's test out our interface and table by submitting a test form. We could see here that it was successfully submitted. Our form entry was recorded and stored in our table below the interface form. We'll click the home page to return to our interface page and click on our Zap below. This opens up our Zap editor and voila, we have our Zap template in place. It's now up to us to connect our app accounts and map that information to the other steps in our Zap. We have our interface form as the trigger and we'll go ahead and test it here to make sure it works in our Zap editor. Great, it's pulled in the test record we submitted before. Next in our Zap is the formatter step, which automatically formats text the way you want. We want to format the date that the record was submitted through our interface form, since this will be important information for our team to know. We tested this formatter step and the output now mirrors the date format we selected. Now, let's set up the actions. This template creates a dedicated Slack channel for the incident and notifies team members who need to respond. We just need to connect our Slack account and continue on to the next step. The Slack channel was successfully created when we tested the step. Now that we created the new incident channel in Slack, let's send a message to that channel with the same steps as before. This step allows us to perform field mapping and customize these fields to fit our incident response to our Slack. Looks great! Now, let's test our Slack step. And there we go! Our Slack message was sent to our incident channel and includes all of the fields we mapped in our previous step, such as email, the incident description, status, and severity of the issue. The final step of this automation is now testing our table to make sure the form is added. Pulling up our table from our Zap editor, we see that the record has been added. Awesome work! Since our test was successful, all we need to do now is activate the Zap by clicking Publish. The incident management template is now live and ready to streamline your incident response process. In our last and final lesson for this email series, we'll tackle the final boss automating onboarding employees at your company. We'll get the ball rolling with a complete end-to-end -end workflow that eliminates manual paperwork, automatically creates accounts across key systems, and puts new hire information in one centralized table with the click of a button. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.